Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm so excited to join you today for two reasons. First, this video is part of a hop celebrating my friends Natasha and Erica who've recently both hit big milestones on their YouTube channels. So congratulations ladies, way to go, and thank you so much for inviting me to hop along. The second reason I'm excited is because I couldn't wait to share this card with you. The theme of the hop is do what you love, and for me, that's coming up with an idea that's maybe outside the box of of the supplies that I currently have. So in this case, I came up with the idea to make an Encanto themed card for my niece um, because it's her favorite movie. I didn't have any stamps or dies that are specific to the movie or the theme. So I just shopped my stash, um, stretched my supplies, see what I had that I could come up with to fit the theme. So I'm gonna show you what I used, but again, shop your stash, see what you've got that you can kind of come up with uh, the same type of thing. I use the oval pop box. All of my dies today are from iCrafter, so if you do need to catch some of these supplies, it's one-stop shopping. I went ahead and cut the card base, and then I cut one of the little legs. That set comes with flowers and leaves. I use the leaf to make my candle flame. The candle base is actually um, some just rectangles that I cut. They're one and five eighths by four and a quarter, but we'll trim those down. And then we're gonna use that oval base again and some border dies to decorate the candle along with uh, butterflies. So I've got a panel there, like a half sheet that we're gonna ink blend on and we'll cut out the details for the butterflies. You can see I've already cut the solid images from yellow. I've got some flowers and these flowers are pretty neat. They have the outline and then they have solid inlay pieces. I've gone ahead and cut uh, doubles of each so that I can uh, double them up back to back so that they're pretty from both sides. Remember this card is a 360 degree card so you can see it from every angle so we want it to be pretty any, way, any direction. Um, I've cut a banner that says celebrate. That's gonna go at the bottom of my candle so I didn't need to worry about the back. I used an alphabet die set to cut the letters for my niece's name, Athena. And then we're also gonna use the little inside part of the eight there because we'll stamp push here and we wanna cut that out into like a little oval that we will put over the button of our easy lights. And I'll link everything down below, but shop your stash. You're gonna need some foam tape. This is double thick white. And then we've also got some double thick crystal clear. Uh, the red that you see is just the release paper. To get started, I'm gonna ink blend. And I've got some white ink here. This is just gonna go on the center of the butterflies. And you wanna do both sides because again, 360 degree card. If you've seen the movie, the candle glows. It kind of represents the family's magic. And then there are all these beautiful little butterflies that are glowing as well. So I wanted to kind of simulate that in my card here as well. So I've got the, the white drying on my butterflies here. And then for the detail outlines of the butterflies, we're gonna ink blend onto a light blue piece of cardstock. It's the same uh, cardstock that I cut the, the base out of. And I'm using these medium sized brushes here as well. They're kind of small. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a lot of texture. If you want a smooth blend, use bigger brushes for bigger panels. But I started with the light blue, so I didn't have to worry about full coverage. I've got a base coat there. And then I just want texture. And I'm not going over this a whole lot. I'm just gonna add three colors. And I'll do the base pieces as well so that they match. But I really wanted to give this a lot of colorful texture and feel like it's kind of deep um, for the oval base there's it kind of it's hard to tell here but it it embosses some fold lines you only need to do the top and bottom of each of these pieces because the other parts are kind of hidden after i've got them all ink blended i'm going to splatter on some water i'll pull it up with a paper towel and then i'll let those dry and now we can start cutting out the details of the butterfly. So this is a butterfly burst die set. It's got the outline and then it's got the detail pieces. I'm gonna cut them both together and then um, it gives you all the, de the detail pieces, which is really cool. And it's very easy to actually assemble and get the butterflies to pop up because the wings just pull out, they, they kind of fold out and they're kind of bursting off the yellow. It's really pretty, really dimensional. Now again, we're gonna want the backside to be pretty too. So I flipped my paper over so that I could get the mirror image. And you'll see here, um, I'm not gonna make you watch all of the poking and everything, um, but you can see when I flip it over, the backside will be pretty too. 
So let's work on those candles. Uh, those are one and five eighths by four and a quarter inch. We're going to cut it down. So I've got two layers of cream colored cardstock, one layer of vellum, and we're just going to take one single piece of the cream. We're going to use that oval to partially cut the top. I just want to curve slanting upwards to make the back layer of the candle. And then we're going to sandwich the other two pieces together, so the vellum and the other piece of cream, and we're going to cut a slope going down this time. And it, you don't have to be perfect. These are a little bit long. We're going to end up trimming them anyhow, so I wanted to give myself room to play. That's why I just used four and a quarter inches long. And you can see when we hold those together, we've got sort of an oval at the top that the base or that the flame can uh, nest in, nestle into. <laughs> we'll set the vellum layer aside. That's what we're going to glue the decorated part to. So we just kind of wanted the curve at the top to match. That's why I cut them together. Now I'm going to take my smaller butterfly and this is just the burst inlay. Um, so it's not going to cut out a whole entire butterfly. Um, but you could inlay a regular butterfly here too. And then I've got a border die that has kind of a scallop and I'm going to cut those. And you can see I'll poke those out real quick here. You can see I've got the butterfly outline and then we've got that little scallop. And if you've seen the movie, you know that there's kind of detail above the butterfly in the candle. The candle has like a butterfly in the middle and then detail above, detail below. The banner is going to go below, so I'm really only trying to create some detail above. And I'm mimicking it. I don't need it to be exact. Just see what you have to kind of get the point across. It doesn't have to be perfectly perfect. It's still going to come across just fine. And so I'll glue these pieces to the vellum here with a little gap between my cut lines. And the reason I used that slight curve there is because it gave me just a little bit more, um, a little bit more roundness to my candle. It, you could use a straight line or your scissors, um, but I wanted that just slightly gentle curve there. So we'll set those aside. We're going to do the only bit of stamping on this card. <laughs> um, I've got a little stamp that says push here, and then I'm stamping it with green ink because it's going to be the center of a flower, and the outline of the flower is green paper. So that's why I use the green ink. I'll use that little eight to cut it out. It's an oval rather than a circle, but use what you've got that makes sense. And it fits the words push here perfectly. And now we're going to work on our lights. So if you haven't seen this before, this is an easy light. It's got three lights at the end of a battery pack and the little purple dot at the end there is the button. Um, so we're going to add some adhesive to the back side of the easy light, line it up on one of those flowers that I've already pieced together. And I decided instead of having the wires hang and wrap around from the bottom, I wanted it to thread through to the back side. I want them to come through. So I went ahead and punched a little hole down at the bottom there. I was careful not to cut the wires. Do not cut the wires or it will not work. And then I'm going to piece together a second flower so that I just kind of want to leave some of the, the paper piecing in here so you can see how this works. Um, I like these inlay die sets here because the the filler shape, the inside shape, is the same size as the outside cut edges there, so it's easy to layer on. Uh, but the center, those two little bits between the, um, the flower and the leaves, when I put it on there you can see the silver of the battery clips, so I cut them from blue, the same blue as my card base there, and then I'm going to just inlay them and I use some tape because those aren't designed to be inlaid normally. So I just use some tape to hold it. And then I can uh, start sandwiching this together. I've got some of that double thick foam tape. If you don't have double thick foam tape, you want to just use two layers of regular foam tape because the battery is a little bit thicker than regular foam tape. So double thick works great. And I realized before I start sandwiching it together that I want to stick my wires through the hole and this is going to go at the bottom of my card, so it's going to be flat at the bottom. And I'm going to need to trim off part of that flower there so that it is flat. Again, I was careful not to cut the wires. I'm not sure why I took the release paper off already. <laughs> it wasn't quite at that step. But um, I'll put the uh, front layer in the back there so I can trim it even as well. 
And then before I actually stick it together, I'm going to put a little more of that double stick tape on top of the uh, battery on top there, uh, pull off the release paper, and now I can actually stick this together. And you can see I put the push here over the button. When you press the button, the lights light up. Easy peasy. Uh, that's the hardest part of making a light up card. And then we'll start folding this up. And if, if you haven't made an oval pop card like this before, it's, it's a box card, but it's an oval shape. And they're really cool. It's actually, you cut two pieces, fold them up, basically into little square tubes and then glue them back to back and you have a box card and it seems super complicated but it's not it's really easy um, I do find that it's easier to glue on decorative pieces before you close it all up so I'm gonna spell out my niece's name Athena here I'll glue that down real quick and then um, we're gonna punch the hole so that those wires can thread through to the back of the card here and again, just using that little punch right there, we can push it through. Now, because this card folds up in an oval shape, it, it's going to curve. So that the uh, flower there, instead of adhering the whole entire thing, I just want one single line of adhesive down the back so that the, the blue paper behind it can curve without having a big, you know, bump because of the... Uh, because of the flower. It's the same reason I only used a single layer of letters for her name, even though I, I usually like stacked uh, sentiments. And then we'll just go ahead and fold that up. And you saw me thread the lights through the little slot. I wanted to do that. And I'm being careful not to crimp those wires at all. You wouldn't want to accidentally break them. Before the glue dries, I wanted to fold it back and forth several times to make sure that the card can fold up and down no problem. And then that little blue uh, tab there, that's actually going to slip into the card there in that slot where the wires are coming out. And that will hold our candle onto the card. So I'm just gluing the flame onto the back layer of the candle first. And then I knew I was going to trim the candle down. So I wanted to kind of get this in place and see how far I need to trim it down. I will go ahead and add some glue to the bottom little tab there. And as I tuck it into my card, this is a completely happy accident because normally you can go backwards or forwards <laughs> with that little leg there. And I folded it toward the front of my card, which is good because what I don't realize yet is that just one layer, one little tab is a little bit thin. And I am gonna come back when I have the candle on in there um, because the candle ends up being multiple layers it's a little more heavy so I am going to come back and add a second layer to the back uh, so it's a good thing that I put that foot forward when I glued it down because it allowed me to glue the uh, the second foot in the opposite direction all right here's where you see me trimming down the candle I'm just kind of sandwiching it together seeing how much room I need to leave for the banner and I end up cutting the candle down to, I think it's about three and a half inches tall. With the flame, it's about four and a quarter. You just want it to be a little bit shorter than the butterflies in the end. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach the back layer to that little blue tab that's sticking up. And here's where I'm holding it, you know, to make sure that the butterflies are still just a little bit taller. All you need to do is put a little bit of glue onto that blue tab and I just keep moving the wires out of the way so that I don't accidentally sandwich them in between there. That's not where I want them. I want them in the front. I'll hold it down and again I'm going backwards and forwards to make sure that the card will be able to move up and down without any issue. Now I'm going to take all three of those lights at the end of the wire and I'm going to tape them to the bottom of the candle flame. And the lights themselves, they're, they're little yellow dots at the end of the wires. And I want to make sure that the yellow dots are all facing upwards because the light comes out of the, the yellow dot. Um, and you can put clear tape right on top of them. It's no problem at all. So I've done that there. And then I'm also going to just take a little more tape and follow the wires down. Now when I put my other, uh, the candle front on top, I'm going to notice that you can see the wire a little bit through the vellum window. So I want to cover that up. I just grabbed a, a scrap of that cream colored cardstock, 
I'm going to trim it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's fine if a little bit of the wires show at the top and at the bottom you'll never see it. So I glued it down and then now it, it just covers in the vellum so you don't see it there. The next thing I want to do is take some of that clear foam tape and it looks red because of that release paper on top, but once I peel it off, it'll, it'll be clear and you'll see that. And that's double thick, so it's going to create a nice elevation between the vellum and the light itself so that we don't get a big hot spot. It'll help the whole flame glow. And I tried to turn the lights down a little bit in here so that you can see, but studio lights are studio lights. <laughs> uh, when you turn the lights to normal, then you'll you'll see that the candle actually glows completely the whole flame at the top glows nicely um, but under studio lights it, it still looks a little bit hot at the bottom so here's my trick for a second layer of vellum when you put vellum on you want to put as little adhesive as possible and then you want to kind of dab it off and spread it out as much as possible and then you don't see the adhesive you you could see it on the first layer but I was covering it up with a second vellum layer there and now I'm just going to put the candle front on top. So this is the uh, white foam tape. The reason I switched from clear to white is because the clear tape is a bit heavy and I didn't want to add too much weight overall. So the, the white is a little bit less expensive and it's clear. And this is where I realized that my candle was a little bit wobbly and so I needed a second leg. And that's also where I realized it was a happy accident that I had put my first leg facing the front of the card so that when I slip this one in it can face the back. And I cut it out of that same cream so if by chance you see it from the back side it just blends right into the candle itself. And I'll hold it down for a second and we've got half of this done. And you're probably wondering how come we only have <laughs> like two minutes left in the video and only half the card made? Well, because we did all the hard stuff. Now it's super simple. All we're going to do is fold up the second half of the card. And again, it's four lines that are scored in with the die there. So you fold it up, put a little bit of glue on the tab before it's completely dry. Just work your fold, make sure that it goes back and forth nice. And I'll kind of sandwich these two together here just so you can see how the cards are going to come together. But it, it really is super simple. So if you've been afraid of these cards, but you thought they're cool, you can see how easy they are. Before we sandwich it together, I want to put my butterflies in the middle. And so I glued the decorative layers onto the front and back. I also glued some flowers on. Again, those are double sided so that it's pretty from every angle. And I'm just using some of that wet glue because it gives me wiggle room. And I'm making sure that my flowers are not going to catch on the side edges. You don't want it to extend beyond the blue horizon that you can see of my card base there. If it does, then it won't fold all the way down. So I kind of worked it, made sure that the, uh, the card can go up and down and not catch those flowers. To seal the card up, there's two little tabs on the sides. And I do suggest gluing it together in the open position, or at least holding it open to line it up, and then you can fold it over and pinch it. If you seal this card up and, and you glue it too tight, like too exactly close together, then it'll, it'll be hard to get up and down. And then I added one more butterfly, a single butterfly, to the back. And that pretty much finishes it up. The only thing I did off camera was I came back in with a yellow Copic marker and colored the flame because it seemed a little too pale. And then I sprayed the whole thing with some shimmer spray to make it a little more magical. So that finishes my card. I hope I've inspired you to stretch your supplies, think outside the box and see what you've got and what you can come up with. I think this is really fun. Don't forget that this video is part of a hop. So as you're hopping along with us, leave comments as you go. Let us know what country you're from because some I think some of the prizes um, are specific to certain areas. And then um, check out Tasha and Erica's channels for sure, as well as everybody else's, uh, because there's some great stuff. If you're new to my channel, feel free to hit subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll leave some more videos for you for after the hop in case you want to see some more. As always, my friends, thanks for watching.